Hi guys, Jessie here, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be reacting to Season 1, Episode 10 of Star Wars Rebels. Yeah, the season's been going by so quickly. It feels like we just started and we're already two-thirds of the way done with Season 1. And it feels like the last couple episodes have been slowly getting more and more plot-heavy, which I am excited about. Last time we rescued Sibo, a Rodian old friend of Ezra's family, who was a part of... The Empire, but defected and was on the run with secret information about the Empire. They were able to hand him off to Fulcrum, who we still have not seen. I know it's Ahsoka. Just let me see her, okay? I want to see her. And apparently Sibo had information on Ezra's parents, which he gave to Hera, I believe. And we haven't heard anything about that since. So are they still alive? Or were they secretly working for what would become the Rebel Alliance, or are they still being held prisoner? We don't know, but Hera's reaction was not as negative as I thought it would be, so maybe they're still alive. And if they are still alive, hopefully they're super chill with their kid running off with a crew of a bunch of adults that they don't know and learning how to use a laser sword. We also had... Ezra tap into the dark side a little bit. Um, he didn't understand what he was doing because he didn't know what the dark side was, but he let his anger control him for a hot second to try to stop the Inquisitor and ended up losing control and sending a giant bat thing after the Grand Inquisitor. So hopefully Kanan will uh, maybe teach Ezra a little bit about the dark side just so Ezra knows what he's looking out for, because, yeah, learning how to use the Force without understanding the whole scope of the light side and the dark side and what all that means, uh, I think would be very dangerous. So hopefully we'll delve into that a little bit more. All in all, though, I've been really enjoying this season, and I can't wait to see what happens next. So without further ado, let's just jump into this episode of Star Wars Rebels. <sighs> Ezra. When we were on that asteroid, you made a dangerous connection through the Force. Now, I have to know if you are ready. I am ready. Wait, ready for what? For a test, a real challenge. One that could determine if you're meant to be a Jedi or not. become the Jedi you see in me, the one I don't always see in myself. You're lucky I'm not my master. She'd never let you get away with all the things you tried to get away with. You want a second chance or not? I mean, if you want to give me one. I'm not giving you anything. You have to take it. Now go prep the Phantom. As you say, master. Everything was different back then. All that remains now is the Force. And only my connection to the Force can lead me to the temple. <laughs> he can be taught. Cute. There's a massive stone. With a tunnel, I think. And a bright star inside of it. The stone from my vision. Autopilot disengaged. You already knew. <laughs> of course he knew. take too long. Remember, the Empire has access to all the old Jedi records. They may know about this temple and have it under surveillance. That's really pretty. Man, just the force theme makes me emotional. <laughs> Reminds me of the temple in Jedi Fallen Order. The way the entrance looks. In here, you'll have to face your worst fears and overcome them. And there's no guarantee of success. I have plenty of faith. 
Faith, you'll keep me on track. I'm not going with you. What? Well, where are you going to be? Right here. With them. Masters whose Padawans never return. You're putting your life in my hands? You put your training in my... Wait, what exactly am I looking for? Nothing and everything. That doesn't help! That's I really know. unspecific. But that's what my master told me. Ah, great. Should have brought the holocron. Lothrat, Lothcat, Lothwolf run. Pick a path and all is done. <laughs> really? That's how you're choosing? What happened to using the Force? What happened to having faith in you? Second thoughts. Fortunate. Come on. That is not Kanan. Yeah. Ooh. Force visions. Inquisitor. <sighs> I felt a disturbance in the Force the moment the Jedi decided to bring you here, Padawan. No. No. Who dies first? I know this is just a vision, but I don't know why I'm nervous. How would you get I'm here? I'm not afraid. Yeah. How's Yoda? Because Yoda's on Dagobah. Oh. Those remind me of the little, um, light things from Yoda's arc. They learned how to force ghosts. Okay. Thank you, Master. Thank you? 
That's your show telling us not to think about it too much. I've taken on an apprentice. Apprentice? chills right now. Uh, it's like I... I kind of feel like I'm tearing up a little bit, and I don't know why. What to say? I know what you mean. Uh. He's been working on that thing for weeks. What kind of lightsaber could he possibly build with the junk we have laying around? Well, out a few spare parts I found over the years. And I have some bits and pieces that might work. Modulation circuits, an energy gate. Chopper even donated a power cell. <laughs> I gave him some additional tech. He was pretty specific about what he was looking for. It's a combination of everyone. They all helped create it in a way. I thought I'd let you check it out first. Well, it's different, but that seems about right for you. Go for it. Oh, it's a blaster and a lightsaber. Oh, yeah. Man, I have no idea why I got so emotional during that kyber crystal scene. Like, I legitimately started tearing up just a wee bit. It's a really pretty scene just all together. Um, feels like a lot and not a lot happened in this episode. Because objectively, all that really happened was Ezra went into an old Jedi temple and then got a Kyber crystal and now has a lightsaber. Which is, you know, fun. We, Which is nice. I, I like the fact that He's getting his lightsaber already, and it just feels like the next step in his journey. But even though, like, it was very basic, like, plot-wise, there were so much little things. First we got the Inquisitor showing up as a hallucination, which really puts into perspective what Ezra ends up fearing the most at this point, which is losing his friends and also... I guess rejection. He's afraid of losing these people that now he sees as his family. Because yeah, the two things he saw was Kanan dying and finding out that, that everyone hated him and were just lying to him. Which, you know, I feel you, buddy. Like, yeah, anxiety, I get it, yeah. And now of all the things I was expecting from this episode, hearing Yoda again was not one of them, I'm gonna be honest. And to have I'm guessing it was Tom Kane back as Yoda because it sounded a lot like him. Tom Kane, as much as I love Frank Oz, Tom Kane is the voice that whenever I think about Yoda, Tom Kane is the voice I hear in my head. He is kind of the voice of Yoda for me. I don't know if that was actually Yoda, like, force projecting or if it was just another illusion from the temple. Part of me thinks it was real because of the little glowing orbs that we saw because those remind me visually of some of those things we saw on Dagobah uh, in the Clone Wars whenever Yoda was trying to find Qui-Gon Jinn and that whole arc with 
learning how to become a force ghost after death. I remember pretty distinctly one of the visual cues was like those glowing golden orbs. So maybe his ability to project his essence after death also helps him project throughout like space and actually being able to project his consciousness and his voice into this temple. Because what else is Yoda going to be doing all these years? He's just chilling on Dagobah this whole time, so. Something I also noticed was during the hallucination of the Inquisitor the first time, the Inquisitor, after hearing Kanan's name, said something along the lines of, that's, that's the name he's going by now? So was that just another part of the hallucination, or... It seems like such a weird detail to include if it doesn't mean anything, so is Kanan not his real name, and is it like a Ben Kenobi situation where he's been going by Kanan this whole time to hide from the Empire, or is it something else? Because it would make sense that Kanan wouldn't be his actual name. But speaking of Inquisitors, um, now that Ezra has a lightsaber, hopefully the next time the Inquisitor you know, actually shows up and not in hallucination, maybe he'll actually be able to help because Kanan hasn't been able to take on the Inquisitor on his own so far. So, but maybe Padawan and Master together, Kanan and Ezra, can end up taking him out. Also, Ezra's lightsaber design, um, it looks like it's actually a mix of an actual lightsaber, but the handle's also a blaster. Which is kind of cool because it kind of shows that he's not a traditional Jedi. He's he's still this street kid who who grew up using a blaster and being a thief. And he's not a traditional Jedi, so he does not have a traditional lightsaber. How that saber will work practically, I don't know. It might lead to some interesting combat, though, if he can use the blaster element and the lightsaber element, like, back-to-back -back or at the same time. But also, I think it's very sweet that each member of the crew kind of gave a little something to create the lightsaber. So it almost feels like the lightsaber was almost a group effort and that Ezra has a little piece of everyone in that lightsaber. So there's something very sweet about that, I feel like. I'm just a sucker for a found family trope, so. So that was my reaction to season one, episode 10 of Star Wars Rebels. So thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye.